You know the canvas bags? The ones that you can walk into pretty much any craft store and buy in like a multi-pack? These canvas bags, I think, are the perfectly already assembled bag liner for your crochet bags. And we're gonna put that to the test today. I have a stack of granny squares that I crocheted last summer because I mean, honestly, these are the best grab and go projects. We're gonna turn them into a pretty cover for this canvas bag. And I wanna take you along the ride with me. If nothing else, I really just wanna inspire you to use a canvas bag as a, ba a bag liner for your crochet bags because it's just so easy. Now the cool part about this project is you don't really have to do a ton of pre-planning, but a little bit might go a long way. These canvas bags are 15 inches wide by 16 inches long, and my granny squares are a little bit bigger than four and a half inches wide. You can block them a little bit if you need a little bit of extra size, and that'll go a long way. That gets me perfectly okay from one side to the other, but it does leave about an inch on the top side. So we'll play around with that. We'll see if we like a border up there, if that would look good, or maybe we just like to leave it open. I'm kind of just winging it here as we go. Now, I think the first thing, and this is probably gonna be the hardest part, honestly, is figuring out how to arrange the granny squares before we join them together. Stop overthinking it, it's fine. This is a fine arrangement. I'm happy with it, mostly. I really, really wanna use this Aran color to join them together, but I know that's not gonna be the easiest color for you to see. I think I'm leaning this way. This, this color feels really springy and pretty and fresh, and that's what we're going with. We're gonna use this color, and I still think I'm gonna use the single crochet join I might change my mind. Now you can experiment a lot with this too. When I do this single crochet join, I tend to like to work in the inner loops. So the back loop on the square that's right here in front of you. And then I guess technically the back loop on the square behind there. Because when you do that, the open loops create kind of a bit of a frame. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about once I get a few more stitches in place. I really hope this works out as good as it looks in my head. You know what I mean? Do you ever have an idea where you just think that it's going to be great, but you really don't know why it's going to be great? <laughs> this is one of those situations. Who knows how well this is gonna turn out? I hope it's good. See how you can see that line here and down there? kind of sort of folded over, but I don't know. I think that looks a little bit neater and I like it. So we're gonna keep going with it. This join is really quick too. There are so many other ways that you can join your granny squares together. I just really like this one. And I think the extra texture that this one creates because it's kind of raised will just make the bag pop that much more. But yeah, there are so many join options. I do have a video that has five of my favorite granny square joins. I'll link that below if you want to check that out and get some inspiration um, that way. It shows some examples so you'll be able to see what it looks like and decide if you like it for your bag. But honestly, whatever looks best to you is the right answer. I might be warming up to the, the blue color. I really, I really did have my heart set on using the same color, but I think I'm liking the change here. So anytime you're adding a new set of granny squares, I kind of just jump right into it and don't really do anything special. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot lately about the projects that we can crochet in the spring and the summer together that are useful when we're finished with them. And bags are definitely something that comes to mind. The other thing too that I've been thinking a lot about, and I think I've even mentioned it in another video, is clothing. 
I really want to start crocheting more clothing and crocheting clothing that I'll actually wear. Like it's one thing to spend a lot of time on a project, but then to never use it. I don't know. I just, I don't have time for that anymore. <laughs> I really want to put the things that I'm making to use. You know, initially when I thought about how this was going to come together, my thought was to treat each side separately. So I would join the nine for one side and then join the nine for the other side and then add more joins on the sides. <laughs> and then I actually thought about it and, and figured it would be easier and it would make more sense if I just continued the join. So we have the three for one side, the three for the other, and then it's just gonna fold on that. And I, th I think it'll work out. I guess time will tell. I really want to experiment with some other stitch patterns and maybe use something other than granny squares or a different type of motif. I think hexagons would be really cool if you can make that work. I think, I think, I think I'll probably have to do a little bit more planning on that one, but I think they would be really cute. I don't know. That's the cool thing about this project is you can get super creative with it and whatever you can dream up, just try it. There's really no harm in trying. If it doesn't turn out the way you like, you can just rip it out, reuse the yarn. But if it does work out, then you have a really cute bag. So I have all of the joins now that are running in one direction and I just flipped everything over and we will start crocheting in the other direction on the join. And the idea here is for me to have all of the joins completed and then I can kind of just work it around the canvas bag. So whenever I come to a join and I need to cross that over, I like to handle it like this. I, I will go into the corner space on this one and then I just jump over into the corner space on the next one. And that's really all that I do. I think that looks pretty okay. I'm sure there are other ways that you can handle that join, but you know, do what works best for you. Whatever you think looks the best, I think is the right way. I was a little bit worried about using the misty green colorway for the joins because I was just really set on having the white or the cream color. But I, I think this is, this is proof that sometimes you go against your gut and it actually works out too. I think this is going to be really cute. Mm, okay. So we have basically all of the joins except for the one that actually ties it all together. So <clears throat> this join isn't going to be any different than the others. You'll just pull them together. and work it just like we did before. I know I've been shortening this a little bit so that you're not watching me crochet every single stitch because that would be boring, but this really hasn't taken me a lot of time. I would say I have spent less than an hour or maybe around an hour crocheting these joins. I mean, that's totally doable. And once we have them joined together, there's not much left that needs to happen. Honestly, I really like projects like this. A lot of times when I sit down to make a video, I know what's going to happen. I know what it's going to look like. I have every single step mapped out and present it in such a way that's, you know, makes a lot of sense for you and is straight and to the point. And yeah, this one hasn't necessarily been the case. This is very much an experiment, but I tell you what, this is a lot of fun. Okay, now our flat piece is no longer flat and it is indeed a tube. We are one step closer. Now I have no idea which <laughs> three I want it to be the front and the back. I think it was like this. I think it has the potential to be really cute, but then <laughs> there's always a slight chance that it's a total bust. I guess we'll see. We'll see soon enough. This is the last join that needs to happen. 
and then we can start figuring out how to put all of this together. Now there's really just something about a classic granny square that has a special place in my heart, but I can imagine this project will work with any type of square that you can dream up. I know the solid granny square is a really good one. I do have a pattern and a video for that one and I'll link that in the description. By the way, I totally forgot about this. There is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how I crochet these granny squares on this channel. I'll link that as well. That obvious one totally slipped my mind, but also the solid granny square. I'll link that one. I think that would be a good one to use, but there's also some really cool squares out there. Like the um, sunburst granny square is a really good one. There are some that have, you know, daisies in them. You could do like a popcorn stitch flower, turn that into a square. Ooh, that would be a really good one. Maybe I'll do that one next. I don't know, all sorts of squares that you could use for this project. And I think they would be super cute. So the resources that I have available, I'll have linked below the patterns for some of the squares that I think will be good. But honestly, if you have a favorite square already, I'm sure it'll work. Just try to set yourself up, at least if you have this size canvas bag, the 15 by 16, try to arrange your squares so that they're about four and a half inches wide. And then you can block a little bit more so they're like 4.75 to five inches wide. I think that'll put you in a good spot to be able to join and just not have to do any additional work to put them together and like turn it into a bag. Final join complete. Before we test it out, I'm going to be a good crocheter. I'm gonna weave all of these ends in first. So along the edges here, where like this was where I joined the full tube together and where we have this kind of untidiness, when I'm weaving these in, I'm actually running the needle under this join so that it pulls it together and makes it look a little bit more like cohesive and weaving it along the stitches here so that the same colors are together. That way, if there's any poking through, there's no, you know, obvious messiness. The rest of the ends are pretty straightforward though. How stinking cute is this going to be? This is going to be adorable. Okay, but the big question, will this bag fit inside of it? We shall see. It did shrink up a little bit in the joining process, which I totally would have expected. So that means we do indeed need a border. And here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we use just a regular granny stitch in the blue color to match everything else. And then we add some kind of chain that loops around the handles. That way it all stays in place. And this should be pretty easy to add these into place. I'm gonna start in the corner here and make a couple of chains. I typically drop a chain from what the recommended one is because my double crochets are shorter than normal. So I like to chain two at the beginning to count as my double crochet, but just know that that's not technically correct. I don't know how much you could hear Paisley chirping in the background. This little cat loves to watch YouTube. And so she is watching YouTube and talking to it. <laughs> I kid you not. So the one potential problem we run into is at the corners where the join is. There's not really enough space between them to have a full like three double crochet um, cluster, if you will, because then it gets to be a little too wide and there's not enough space between them to really look like the rest of the stitches. So we're experimenting here. I've got two double crochets in each of the corners Yes, that's technically one stitch more than we would normally have, but it's the best way that I have found so far. We'll see what that does on the next round. 
should be okay. Yeah, that'll totally work out. So when you're on the next round, you can still use three double crochets in between there. And I think it looks a lot better. You can play around with that too. This is not really a cut and dry, this is what you have to do kind of video. It's really just about trying something new and seeing what works and using the stitch pattern or the techniques that end up looking good in the long run. So I did want to show you how I'm handling these joins. I'm not saying this is like the best way to do it, but it's been what I've been doing so far. I'm finding my, my chain that is acting as a double crochet and joining with the slip stitch there. So that finishes it off. But we really need this to also be like the next group. We need to be in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is make my chain, which acts as a double crochet, and then just make two double crochets in that space that's right behind. And that way they, they stay in the right place. So I think those three rounds did the trick. That got us close enough to the handles now that we can do a simple row. I'm thinking a row of, or a round, of slip stitches and then have a chain and kind of skip some stitches to loop it around the handles. So yeah, I think the slip stitch is probably the best bet here because it's a really short stitch, but it also has a tendency to be a little tight and I really want that to help kind of pull this together, if you will. So I think, so this cluster is real close to where that handle is. So I think I'm gonna slip stitch up to it and then probably chain three. Yeah, so we'll chain three. And then here's where we need to do a little bit of shifting around. I'm taking my yarn and putting it around, like looping it around the handle. Let's see if we can get that to go up a little bit more. And then slide my hook around it so it's wrapped around there and then slip stitch in this chain space. Yeah, I think that'll totally work. Yeah. I like it when an idea comes together. Not real sure how or why things are just working out today, but they are, and I'm okay with it. I'm just going to slip stitch here in my first slip stitch of the round just to join and finish things off. I have one more in to weave in there, no big deal. But let's get a look. I think we actually did it on the first try. I don't even believe it. I really just love it when a plan comes together and comes together this well. I think the one thing that I would have changed about this entire project is the size of the granny squares. I knew it was going to be cutting it close and I felt pretty comfortable with the fact that it was going to be a teeny bit smaller because yarn does have a tendency to kind of stretch and flex and give over time and I think it's still okay but if I could change one thing I would probably have made them a teeny bit wider overall but I think this is still a perfectly functional bag. I'm super excited. This was so much fun. It turned out so adorable. I do still have one end to weave in. And honestly, I don't think me holding it up here is going to do it any justice. So I'm probably gonna throw some pictures up on the screen. This bag actually surprised me. It was super quick. It took about a couple of hours, I would say, to join everything, to crochet the border, and like get everything squared away. But that's really it. I mean, it's just such a quick and easy project. 
I do want you to have some instructions to be able to duplicate this if you want. So while I won't have like a PDF pattern available in my shop, I will write up a how-to post on my website. I'll have that linked in the description below. Now, when you do get your bag finished and you share a picture on Facebook or Instagram, please do tag me in that photo because I would love to see what you guys come up with. You're always so creative. There are so many different ways that you can take this idea and run with it. And I just need to share those photos with the community. So don't forget to tag me, check out the link in the description below for all of the other resources, the how to crochet the granny square, the how to joins video that's got five different joins in there. And then I'll throw up a couple of other things to the solid granny square, just other things that might get you started. You'll find all of that information linked below. Also, if you want a really great way of supporting me and my work and the channel here, behooked.com is our shop where we have our PDF patterns, where we have some pattern bundles and some t-shirts. Happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one.